Okay, so I invited Dave back. Um, he he had a really good week trading uh, this week and a really bad day yesterday. So I invited him back to have a little talk with. I, I was actually going to talk to him on the phone, but I thought that maybe you guys might appreciate some of the stuff that he is going through and has gone through. Um, things were looking good this week and like happens with a lot of us, um, we kind of have a mental blowout. I know it happened to me many times and there's no worse feeling in the world, right? You can you could sure feel um, kind of stupid when when you keep moving your stop and allowing yourself to go deeper and deeper in the hole, thinking that surely things are going to turn around and you know gets to a point where it's just horrible. Yeah, so you have a few good days. And you start winning, and then they start compounding day after day. You're winning, you're winning, you're winning, and something inside you goes, hey, I got this. Suddenly, my special powers have kicked in, and I am now bulletproof, and I know how to trade, and, and this is going to turn because I feel it. Uh, I, I know... My gut says this is this is going to change and it's going to go back in my favor. So it starts sliding away and it starts getting worse and worse. And then you start praying and you start going, man, if I could just get back to where I was only down $500. And so I want to make sure those of you that have experienced this, you know, kind of let Dave know he's not alone because it's an awful lonely feeling, I know. It's a very lonely feeling to be by yourself and then for that kind of implosion to happen. And it, uh, it eats at you. So, yeah, I'm not sure how much you've, you've watched and listened, Dave, on... on what you know I talk about a lot so my question for you is we're gonna a couple of things but my question for you is if you were an employee of my trading company and I had given you very specific rules to follow um, and and your your job was not to win trades. Your job was only to execute the trade plan. Thanks, Scylla. I'm glad you do. Yeah, and it's it's better to hang around with people that are demonstrating some of the characteristics that you're missing in your trading and that's why a trade room can sometimes be very valuable so my question to you dave is would yesterday have happened if it had been my trading account that you were trading it's it's interesting yeah exactly so you have listened to some of the stuff I've talked about, or you just know this. As an employee, you don't want to ever have to stand up in front of your boss and just say, look, I know my I know what it's supposed to be. I just couldn't do it. I know what my job is. I just couldn't do it. I'm not cut out for the job that you're paying me a salary for. You don't want to... You don't want to look stupid in front of other people. In front of ourselves? Yeah, that's okay. 
because we can justify it and our minds go, yeah, well, I know I'm not stupid. I just did a stupid thing. So we can justify it, but to try to do it in front of other people, you know, you're going to, you don't know, you, you can't convince them that you're not stupid because you can't follow simple rules. So that's where accountability comes in. And it's very important that we somehow try to introduce accountability into our trading when we're just trying to gain some traction. And that's part, we have a, a mentoring, a peer mentoring program um, where the, the mentors are, are accountable to each other. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's a very important part of dropping some bad habits and, and building some good habits. Um, so the, the other thing that you've got to ask yourself is how often are you, and I already know the answer to this, how often are you thinking about money while you're trading? So what was your previous profession or whatever your profession might be now or what did you do prior to this? When, when people ask you what you did for a living, what did you tell them? What type of business? So to get in the mindset of what I'm, I'm talking about as far as um, being accountable, it might be a little easier for you. It was for me because I also ran my own business and I had employees and each employee had an area of responsibility. So right now in your mind, when it comes to day trading, you've got one employee, you've got one person and you're you're bearing all the weight of all the responsibilities of that business all at one time. So when you sit down to trade, it might be the bookkeeper that's sitting down to trade. It might be your lead trader. It might be the person uh, in charge of uh, uh, training and scheduling or, pl or records keeping or uh, uh you know, it could be any any one of those people at any given time while you're trading. I know in my construction business, I'd never asked my bookkeeper to go out on the job and hammer nails. Ever. She didn't do that. She had a specific job. Nor did I have my lead, uh, my crew leads come in to the office and do filing or you know whatever bookkeeping their jobs yes they worked for the same company they all had a, we all had a common goal but everybody had their own individual jobs so when you sit down to trade each day you've got one job and that is to execute the trade plan. Now, when you're running these telecommunications companies, at the end of the day, you want to show profits. But during the course of your day, are, is everything you do about profit and about how profitable I'm going to be in the next five minutes, 10 minutes, Hey, if I switch suppliers, I'm going to be this much more profitable. If I, you know, hire this guy, I'm going to be this much more profitable. I'll make this much money today if I do this. As everything you do in the business geared towards how much money you're going to make for that thing that you do. For me, I could go about my entire day without thinking about money. Yes, of course, I had to think about money at some point, but I had time set aside to do that. My job was to work on all kinds of stuff, putting out fires mostly, but um, efficiencies, 
right? So I'm thinking about how can I make this person more efficient and that's my job, or how can this, uh, this job be completed the most efficient way possible? That's my job, right? Well, obviously efficiency has something to do down the road with profitability, but that's not what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about how can we make the customer happier? How can we, you know, make a better product? How can we do these things knowing that if I do my job, money comes later? Yet, for some reason, you're approaching trading totally differently. So this was an epiphany I had when I sat down. And, and you very much like me, I had uh, a few hot tub stores uh, along with the construction business. So very much like me, I uh, you potentially you sit down and you go, why is it I can run these successful businesses and and have other success in my life? Yet this trading thing keeps kicking my ass. Why is that? And, you know, I asked my, myself that question a few times, and I never actually bothered to answer that question. It was more just feeling sorry for myself. So I would just shake my head. I'd just walk around in a bad mood all day because I'd just gotten my butt kicked again. So here's a uh, real quick day before you even got here. I already hit my target for the day, right? I had a, a plus three winning trades this morning and I'm out of the markets now. I have hit my daily target for the day and I'm out. And now if you use that little chart that I gave you, that I emailed to you, you kind of might have a kind of a general idea on about where my day ended. So my mission using that chart is to string together as many consecutive days of that as I can. So I get out of the markets when I'm ahead. And I know that's counterintuitive to a lot of people. But that's how I manage to not have those blow up days anymore. I don't have any huge winning days either. I don't have any big winning days. I don't have any big losing days. Because it's all about being consistent, just like running a business, okay? You would never run a business the way you're day trading, ever, or you won't be in business very long. So the thing that I was saying, this might be easier for you to do because you have run businesses, you have had employees and people that are accountable for certain areas of the business. When you sit down to trade every day, you're sitting down as one employee of your company during the trading hours. Win or lose, doesn't matter what you do, uh, what what your results are doesn't matter. Your job is one thing: execute the trade plan. That's it. That's all there is to it. Don't worry about the money. That's somebody else's job later. That's where the wheels came off yesterday. Had you had that mentality that you're just an employee of a company, and that in order to get a paycheck you have to execute the trade plan as it's written perfectly. And if you sit down with that mentality, you wouldn't have had that day. You would have, you would have hit your stop, 
it would have been over. You'd have had a, not a great day, but not a horrible day. But at some point, you got greedy. Um, you got nervous. And then the further it went, it became a grudge thing. And then it turned into, oh, God, I just want to get some money back. And I don't know, you may have been doubling down. Just so you know, it can happen to anybody. But you've got to start rethinking your approach to this. Don't treat this as a hobby if you really intend to make it a profession. You've got to treat it as a business. At one point of the day, you're the lead trader of your company that gets a paycheck, like you said. When that is over, then you switch hats and you become the analyst for your company. And you go and you analyze the trades you took you make sure that you can find the rules on your trade plan exactly where that those rules are for the trades that you took. So you're accountable to your business. That's and and that's why I say it may be easier for you because as a business owner you're going to work harder than most people. And you're going to work for less money than most people because you're going to put in the hours that other people don't even know that you're putting in. I always figured I was the lowest paid person in my company based on hourly. Of course, all my employees thought I was the one making all the money, but they were. Based on number of hours worked. So you have an appreciation for what it takes to run a business. Well, this is a business. And you've got to separate yourself from the money. Now that is in and of itself. Let me tell you how I did that. Um, I, I realized I had these series of epiphanies or ahas. You know, once I had one, then that kind of opened the door to the next one and the next one and the next one. And one of these was that I had a an unhealthy relationship with money as it relates to trading. And that my whole approach to trading was about money. And that's why I couldn't, I, I failed to manage my emotions. I would have blow ups where I would blow out an account or erase all profits and then lose that much more again. Uh, I, I did that all the time. And I realized I even would get excited when I would sit down to start trading in the morning. It was exciting to me because of the potential of what the day held. I might make a lot of money today this is exciting i can't wait to sit down and start trading but at some point i realized that you know i never got excited about going to work it was just what i did um i started realizing i was treating trading kind of like a video game or like gambling like a hobby um, and I was not treating it like a business, like I should have been, and like most people don't. So one of the things you got to do is to train yourself to stop thinking about money. And I know that sounds hard, but it's possible. At least you can you can do it to the point where 
when money does come back into your mind, you kind of you've built up some tools to understand that that's what's happening and you know you need to stop doing that. So when I when I did this and I realized that if if trading is about money and and I'm always thinking about money, how can I take money out of trading? Can I make it about something that's not money? It's only about doing the job. So the first thing I did was I stopped looking at my daily P&Ls that get emailed. How many people are still looking at your daily P&Ls? I know you look at them. I know you do. You want to see how you did or didn't do. So I realized that if I'm, if I'm studying that and I can't wait for it to come in, I'm looking at it every day. That makes my daily activity about how much money I, I made or lost that day. So I stopped. Not only did I stop looking at them, I have a folder in my email that they just get mailed directly to that folder I'll have a rule in my email that if you know if it has this subject line it goes straight to this folder so that I have them in the event that there's an error or somebody needs to check it um, when I say somebody it could be you but that's when you're doing bookkeeping not while you're trading okay that's when you're you've got parts of your day set aside to perform certain tasks as if you're a whole separate person from that guy that's doing the the lead trader stuff in the morning so i stopped looking at those and i got to a point where i would only glance at my monthly statement you know how you're doing so that was one thing the next thing is, is remove any references to money or even ticks if you're using a dome or um, um, I don't even know if it's in chart trading. Yeah, I think it is. You can see you're constantly looking at where I'm at for the day. Okay, what? how much money have I made today? So my goals of people come into trading uh everybody does they say well i have a goal of making five hundred dollars a day or whatever it is and so they start out the day thinking about the goal thinking about the money well money makes us stupid and emotional and makes us do stupid things you that money makes good people do bad things and that's just the truth of it. It's not just you. It's all of us. Money is emotion. Which is why I worked so hard at removing money from trading. I don't know if you noticed the, the five days that you were here previous to today. Did you ever hear me talk about money? I never, unless it's brought to me or somebody wants to talk about something specific, I never talk about money. All of the other trade rooms you go to, they're going to pander to your need to talk about money and think about money. And this is, this is what so many other trading companies do is... They focus on what you think is important. That's what, because that's what you want to hear. So if they talk about what you want to hear, you're more likely to buy what they're selling. Right? That that your compatriots, like, oh yeah, we're of like mind. I'm, I'm all about what you're about. And uh, yeah, I think I agree with everything you're saying. And they know this. And that's why they're trying to sell you stuff that's unrealistic because most traders are, have unrealistic expectations. 
So the next thing to do, stop thinking about money, is turn off any reference to money on your on your platform. You can even in your uh, in your uh, accounts tab where it shows your your gross realized and and realized PL and all that stuff. Yeah, there's a tab on there. You can get rid of that tab. You can you can just delete the tab and not even have it on your platform. Cause it really doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm watching the GC. It doesn't matter because how much money you've made that day doesn't it shouldn't matter what you do next based on how much money you have or have not made that day. You have a plan. Your plan doesn't involve making decisions based on how much money you have made or have not made that day. Right? So you've got to have a plan for growth. And it's got to be based on something. Can't be money. Which is why you hear me talk about and, and a lot of the other traders here have adopted this. I trade for wins and losses, and that's how I keep track. Net three winning trades for the day, I'm done for the day. Winning trades, that's it. That can mean one tick. It can mean, you know, uh, uh, five ticks with uh, 12 contracts. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It's a winning trade. That's your goal. And you want three of those. Net three. So if you lose the first one, you have to win four, right? Conversely, you might have a crappy day. And you have net three losing trades. And that's where you stop. This is how I never have huge winning days or huge losing days consistently I have a lot more winning days than I have losing days and that's a consistent income that's what you should be looking for for day trading don't try to get rich at this don't try to make a lot of money each day and definitely don't try to make back money that you've lost you have to look at that as the cost of that lesson learned As long as it was a lesson learned, that was the cost of the lesson. Just like going to college, there's there are costs involved in going to college so that you can learn things. Well, there's costs involved in day trading if you're going uh, to learn things, but you've got to learn from those things or you wasted that money. So references to money need to be removed from your trading, both visually and mentally. You can't do it automatically. This is a, this is a process of trying to get rid of bad habits while you're creating good habits. You're not going to read a book and suddenly have all the answers. You know, I, and I heard, I know most of you have read, and I hear this all the time, and, and, and I did it too. The, the traders, day traders Bible is um, trading in the zone, right? By Mark Douglas. Everybody's read that. And you thought, what an incredibly good book, right? Awesome. Great, great book. Well written. The guy's speaking to me. And yet, <laughs> people still struggle. How is that? Everybody talks about what a great book this book is. Oh, it really helped me. What a great book. Yeah, I still can't trade. Why is that? Because it's not about Gain, it's not about just collecting information. 
when you read a book like that, you're collecting information that he has about trading. And you can read it and you go, oh, that sounds really good. But information is not what it's all about. Information is just information until you turn it into knowledge and you turn information into knowledge with experience. And it's a process. Experience, you can't buy it. But you can do those things to work at it. Which was my point, I think, in one of our emails was that you know, we've obviously, we've shown you over the last five, six days that we have an edge. I mean, it, that's why we invite people to the trade room. It's an obvious edge that we have. So we found a part of day trading that is predictable and consistent, which is hard for people to do. It's a hard thing to find something that has the type of edge that we have. So now that we found it, we don't have to keep looking anymore. Hey, Tony, what if we use this indicator? And what if we change this to this? And what if we did this? And what if we did that? I get that all the time, right? And I'm like, yeah, we could try that. Or you could try that or whatever and just do, do your thing. But man, I have found consistency that I have never found before this. And so have many hundreds or thousands of other people. Why keep noodling with it? It's, it's consistent. Now, it does require execution, which is a skill which is practicable. So that's what's different about what we do. While you're practicing... You're gaining experience. Okay, this is how you become conditioned. You also start becoming more confident in your skills as you become better and better. It's a process that you're going to have to go through to change how your brain works. It's a process. As much as we want to just read a book or watch a video and go, aha, there's the answer. It's not out there and it's not as simple as that. The answer is work hard at it. Of course, the first thing is, is find a trading system or style of trading that, that is consistent, that you can prove is consistent. Okay, that's the first task, which I don't, I think you mentioned that you hadn't actually zeroed in on that just yet. So the first task is to zero in on a trading style or system that has a, a demonstrable edge consistently. And that's, that's done for us. That's done. Now. We can go move past that and say execution is the thing and I've got to get good at execution and how, and I've got to gain experience so that I can continue to get better and better and better at execution so I could take advantage of these relatively quick setups that we have. And that's where you practice. That's part of your daily routine. Instead of sitting in the afternoon session and trading maybe two or three trades in the afternoon, take that time and practice 30 or 40 trades. So that when in the morning sessions, when we have the most liquidity, now you're tuned up and ready to go to trade the better time of day. So you can stop wasting time trading in the afternoon Use that for time for practice, for doing something that's going to help you become more conditioned than to be trading with live, just waiting for a trade set up so I can make more money. So I've covered a lot of stuff here, and it it's uh, a lot to try to get your head around, Dave, and everybody else. Um, 
and and it, and it kind of if you break it down into bite-sized chunks uh it becomes more manageable that that, that was the abridged version uh, i've got a lot a lot more in it and and a lot of it comes from my ex experience um uh i have the scars i have the same scars i have very deep scars <laughs> And I remember what it took to overcome them. Well, you thank Dave for having a bad day yesterday and for sharing that with me. Because it gives me the opportunity to address it in front of all of y'all. And at some point it may be helpful in keeping y'all from exp uh, imploding. Uh, one day yeah we've all done it and man there's no worse feeling i would feel so dumb and i would hey, so one of the things i don't know if you've seen our my uh video for the two tick challenge or it's called uh two takes to paradise and there's a two tick challenge and it's about building confidence really but when when you have a losing day, it kind of hangs around with you all day, doesn't it? You don't just get up and walk away from it and say, oh, well, tomorrow's another day. When you're, you know, when you're still struggling to gain any type of consistency, that kind of hangs with you all day and it, and it messes with your mood all day. So does winning. Even if it's one tick, if you end the day as a winner, don't you notice that your entire day is better? You walk with your head up instead of slumped over with a cloud over your head. Pep in your step. If you're just a little happier. Yeah, maybe you didn't make a thousand dollars that day. But you didn't lose money either. You did, you finished the day as a winner, which is better than 90% of the other traders out there. So initially, your mission is to finish your day as a winning trader. And that can mean one tick, two ticks, whatever. You fin And so we, I, I have a, a little um, thing for how to do that. So it's a process. You want to teach yourself that you can be a consistently winning trader. Most people have no idea if that's even possible. All they do is sit down every day and go, I got to make a bunch of money. I got to, I have a daily goal. I want to make $500. That's what I'm, that's what I got to do. And so you're driven, you're trying to make this $500, but, and, and now it's all, everything's about money and your brain's not going to work right and you're going to make mistakes and you're going to get emotional and you're not going to get the $500 and every now and then you will though. Every now and then you will. And they go, well, if I did it today, why can't I do it every day? And so you have a good day. You're feeling good. You probably made a bunch of mistakes, but it ended up working out for you anyway. And you start thinking, well, I don't need no stinking rules. I didn't use my rules on that trade, and I won $1,000. How come I need stinking rules? I have superpowers. I know better. All you've done is emboldened yourself to make more mistakes. And then you wonder why you can't get any traction in your trading. 